You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Was a civil war inevitable between the black and green factions? We're going to find that out today on our special episode, our HBO episode on House of the Dragon. I keep wanting to add dragons to that. That is not true. That is not how it's ever been. It's the House of the Dragon. It's an excellent show. I am joined today, of course, by Kino Kennedy. How are you doing, Kino? I'm well in yourself. And I'm telling you that this this show helped me with my Game of Thrones withdrawals. Okay. So so <laughs> I, I feel was that. really excited. I was really excited to have another Game of Thrones edition thrown in so I can get something to be excited about on, on Sundays when this show was originally aired. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm good and I'm ready to talk about this show back. Excellent, because I should have also mentioned before all this that this is Systematic Geekology, and we are the priests of the geeks. So my bad on that. Uh, If you haven't figured out by now, I'm a little flustered because I have spent the past 30 minutes trying to get this set up correctly. My laptop I normally use for all of this kept starting, restarting every single time I logged in to the program we use to do this. So I had to go to my old beater laptop that the cheap one that I just used to carry around to do schoolwork on while I'm in class, had to download Chrome, had to get everything logged in correctly. We're finally here. We're going to talk about House of the Dragon. All right, Kino, would you like to explain the premise of the show to the good people? Okay, so so this show is literally a prequel to Game of Thrones that takes uh, takes place roughly 300 years before the events of Game of Thrones. It is focusing on the one of the major and one of the oldest uh, families in Game of Thrones, the Targaryens. Um, and it looks at uh, the reign of King Varys the First and uh, and his families and descendants and how they uh, listen. This this show <laughs> this show is about <laughs> dragons. Okay, there's dragons in the show. <laughs> There's dragons in this show, and so if if you if you love Game of Thrones and you love when um uh oh gosh the mother of dragons I can't think of her name Daenerys um, Daenerys yes you you when when you saw her little three dragons born oh you saw that so cute but but when you saw them grow and uh, one of them become part of the uh, Ice King's uh, army yeah so so this. The, Imagine, imagine Game of Thrones, but then souped up like by ten with dragons. That's that's what you have with this show. It's just, it's just, it's just Targaryens and dragons. Now, there's some other stuff that happens in that, but you got dragons. That's 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 the, <laughs> that's why it's called House I mean, of the Dragon. This this is this is why it's, this is why you should be excited. Most definitely, this is a fun show. A little in the past, a couple hundred years before what we get in Game of Thrones proper. Uh, to show the succession story and the two different, you know, factions fighting over who has the right to go to the throne because, you know, you have legit- legitimacy here and you've changed the laws. This person can be in charge here. It's like, how does that work out? What's going on? This is so much fun. And oh, by the way, did I introduce myself? I don't know. I'm Christian. I'm one of the co-hosts here of Systematic Ecology. Like I said, I am flustered. We're going to get through this episode. We're going to have fun. It you is Because okay. once again, Kino it's and I are on. And we can do whatever we want. Yes, and we're talking about dragons, okay? Yes. We're going to talk about dragons <laughs> and have a fun time. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about the past. No. All right. So, Kino, do you have a favorite character on the show so far? <sighs> no. I'm going to tell you why. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Cause, cause, okay, cause, go for it. Cause, cause, and it's nothing against any of the characters. It's just in in my... Uh, watching Game of Thrones, you can't get attached to any character in Game of Thrones because either they'll <laughs> turn or they'll die. And so, mm-hmm. and so, I, I didn't, I don't have a favorite character, but, but I would say I, I like, I like uh, Otto of uh, Hightower. He, he's, mm. he's, 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 he's a guy who had a plan in motion and worked that plan to make sure that his family was still a part of the realm, even though they weren't even a part of the highborn, if they, my memory serves me correctly. I had, it's been a while since I've seen the show. It's been a while since I've seen the show. 
if I remember correctly, the Hightower lore, they are like close to nobles and then became nobles fairly recently. I, I could be because, completely yeah. because, off base. I think so. I think because yeah. because he became Hand of the King. I don't, I yes. don't remember. I don't remember. Um, but but yeah, I don't, Otto was the only one that I would I I I, I know he's like a dislike character because he's conniving, but I nothing against anyone. I, I understand what Otto was doing. Otto was trying to make sure that his family was taken care of. And I'm mm-hmm. not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying I understand. Yeah, I mean, in a world like Game of Thrones, the fact that he wouldn't do something like what he does makes him weak, comparatively speaking. Like, obviously, from our perspective, not really happy with how certain things go, what he does. But from their perspective, like, this makes total sense. Grab that power, get on the throne, do whatever it takes. So so I feel you there. Again, I didn't get attached to any characters um, because I was anticipating some 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 let down a pitfall or something like it. it I, so I was like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not finna, I'm not finna just be like, Ooh, Ooh, I can't wait to see what they do. No, I'm just like, I'm just watching. I'm just, I'm just watching. I'm just watching. So I don't have a favorite character. Well, what about you, Christian? Do you have a favorite character? I, I will say my favorite character hasn't appeared yet. I'm fairly certain they've been mentioned, but I think they're showing up in the second season. And that is a uh, Cregan Stark who is the head of the Stark household at this time. But as far uh, as actually uh, characters within the show that we've seen so far, uh, I'm going with Damon. Uh, I'm going with manipulative, incestuous, terrible person, and also a lover of his family, sometimes a little too literally for its own good, yes, Damon. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, could, I, I, I like Damon. Damon. Damon's weird, but, but I get it. Yeah, though. He's a very I, complicated man. He is, but the Targaryens in and of themselves are just complicated. Like, yeah, the fact is that you have <laughs> the fact is that you that they they will be willing to sleep with each other to keep the bloodline going, even though it drives them crazy. Uh, they didn't care. They wanted to make sure that um, the line kept going, and the family eventually <sighs> doing it out to Daenerys and 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 then Jon Snow. Which was cool though. That was cool. Yeah, that was cool to find out. That was cool to find. Out. Anyway, anyway, we here talk about House of Dragons so. though. Yeah, yeah, no worries. All right. So, do you have a least favorite from what we've seen so far? Who's the, um? Oh my gosh, y'all gotta forgive me. So it was um, Princess Renaria's quote unquote husband. That guy. Um, the one that she actually married. Yes. Oh, what yes. was his name? He oh, was uh, was it was it Laner? I don't remember. Valerion? I think so. Yeah, oh. okay. the one who was uh, actually uh, gay, but ma- they married anyways for ties to the family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him, him. I'm like, sir, you got you got your kids. You just you just gonna let this other man raise your kids? How you just gonna let that happen? That that was I was like, I that that I don't understand that. Can't can't have another man raise your kids. And he ain't can't, well, they ain't look like him though. I understand. Yeah. Still. Still, they're still. kids. They are. They are. They called your dad. They called your dad. Called I feel that. Dad. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 my least favorite character. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go. I, I It was hard picking this because I don't like them for different reasons. And it's like, I know why the show does what they do. Uh, mine was, I, I think my answer is going to be Kristen Cole, who was the first lover that Rhaenyra had. And... Uh, when he said, oh, let's go run away together, she rejected him because obviously that's not going to work out. And then he gets all very, not not quite incel but very possessive of her and then completely goes 180 on how he feels about her simply because he got rejected and all the trouble that comes from that. And I'd say my second one would probably be, uh, what is her name? Uh, Rhaenys Targaryen, the, the one who jumps up from the depths with her dragon in the midst of that announcement of, uh, what is it? Aemon becoming King and kills yeah. all the small folk. And it's like, I'm not going to kill anyone here. And it's like, you just, you just murdered a bunch of people <laughs> right here, oh, but you're not going to kill. Oh, I, I won't be a kin slayer. It's like, okay, I see where the line is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, that, there was no line because these folks, um, wielded, absolute power with minimal restraint mm. um, because 
not trying to be funny, but the Targaryens were the only ones who were able to unify the seven kingdoms because of the dragons. That's the only reason that they are in power. And yes. so you, you're coming up against a f- in family infighting that's also trying to maintain the the hold that they have on a kingdom that is fractured um, because it's only being held together by sheer fear. It ain't it ain't out of obligation. It's out of sheer fear. Um, yeah. Because again, it's it's dragons. It's those dragons. And so you can't. Up until Game of Thrones, you, there was no way you could defeat a dragon. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Up until Game of Thrones, there was there was no way you could defeat a dragon. So um the Targaryens were the rulers and so um when oh my gosh, she was telling what's the prince's name? Um when she named Amon as the new king. Like here's here's the thing here's the thing that folks gotta realize when you're watching this show. This 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 sets us up this is the this is the uh setup for the fire and ice. Is that is that am I saying it right? Christian? A song of ice and fire. Song of ice and fire. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this sets up that 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 uh that struggle in that book. Um, but but this the way the way it's written, um, the way it's presented. I I do like this show. Um, again, I, I I it is um, it's my it fix it helped me to again just feed my Game of Thrones fix when Game of Thrones went off. Like it was it was. This was a good show. Oh, yes. Very much so. I really enjoyed watching this week by week. Just had a ton of fun. Like you said, it got that itch scratched for me for more Game of Thrones content. Mm. Now, one of the biggest parts of the show is the conflict between, you know, Team Black that wants uh, Rhaenyra on the throne. And then you have Team Green, which wants Allison and her children to succeed after, what is his name, uh, Viserys? Viserys. Yeah, yeah, after Viserys dies, like legally speaking, he changed the laws to where uh, his daughter, Rhaenyra, would take the throne away. But Correct. as far as the culture is concerned, we have, you know, a boy should be king. So, like, I, would you say that you're more of a member of Team Black or Team Green? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's I, difficult, I, isn't it? It is very difficult because, because again, um when 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 Viserys was named king it was because all the nobles came together and said that we want this man to be king and um gosh princess what was his cousin's name i'm sorry uh not was, not um was it Rainus? Rainus. i i, I, I can't remember be perfectly honest with you I, was, again again i don't remember people's I mean, anyway, anyway, it's my my point is my point is you have you have this this feud that was going on inside the realm anyway when the king's daughter was overlooked because of his nephew. It was that was his nephew, right? I'm trying to remember, remembering succession rights I, in general is bad, but like Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, even worse. Like all these different houses you have, all these different. Uh, illegitimate children coming into the mix kind of screws oh. up everything. I, yeah, so 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 this is why it's difficult because you have um, Varys' wife, Allison, with uh, Aegon and his brothers, and then you have um, Renarius with <laughs> her bastard children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's like, you can't, you can't really, well, I, no, I'm saying I can't really root for anybody. Cause I'm like, like neither one of y'all really have a legitimate claim to the throne. Um, yes. but, but the fact is that if the, if the decree was made, then the decree has to be honored. The problem that we have is that Allison is saying that the King changed his mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is what the problem is, because uh, Renarius is like, well, my daddy didn't tell me that. That's not what he told me. And if if your son was this, this is what I'm thinking in the back of my mind. If you, if your son was really chosen, then he would know what's coming down the pipeline. 
Mm, yes. Like, like, like that, that is the other thing that I, I, I understand where, uh, Renary, uh, Renaria, um, has a rightful claim only because of that. That is, that's, that's, but I'm still not saying I'm, I'm on either one or the other, but she does have a right in that way. Um, and that's why I think she fighting for her right to, to the claim to the throne because of that secret alone, um, which, which I wonder, cause I never finished, I never read the book, um, is how does, how does that secret get passed on through her? You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. It, if I remember correctly, I have also not read the books. I'm one of those people I don't care about spoilers, so I, st- I start reading stuff. I have not bought the books yet. I, I do have all the uh, uh, A Song of Ice and Fire books, but not uh, the House of the Dragon uh, spinoff stuff. But as far as I'm aware, I think this is something they added to the show. Okay. I think I remember reading that somewhere of him actually telling her about the prophecies and all that. So that may be a change they made there, which I kind of like if that's a change they made because it gives more weight to her being in my opinion, because I'm on team black ultimately at the end of the day, I'm there, even though I really don't like either group (laughs) to be perfectly (laughs) honest with you. But number one, I'm with Rhaenyra because, uh, Viserys named her his heir, changed the law, showed how much love and faith he had in her to do that. That shows uh, a lot of, uh, what's what I'm looking for, uh, at this moment in time, just, how much, like I said, just how much he loves her to be willing to bend the rules, knowing she would be the better option. Well, well, and of course, well, telling her what he, happened. Right, but he 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 prepared her for that because he made sure that she was in the room as the uh, king's cupbearer. Mm-hmm. So so he was preparing her to take over, um, so that she can understand how politics and the, and the, how the politics of the realm goes with the different fractions and so she understands you know how to how to move things however um Allison being her father's child once she yes. gets in there she's like no nah, this this is how it's gonna go because I'm trying to protect my children and I and again I understand that I do I do but but um yeah okay I got you team black okay team black Team Black, I got you. Yeah, and I, like I said, like I don't really prefer either one of them at the end of the day, and I understand both. Like protecting children, both there are two mothers here that want nothing more than for their children to be kept uh, taken care of and to rule. Like I get it. Everyone wants, as a parent, for your children to be to succeed and to end up better than you. Yes, if you're a good parent. Yes, yes. But the way they go about it, all the people have to die as a result of it. Well. That's where we get into the nitty gritty of why sometimes uh, this is what there's a reason we don't live in a monarchy anymore. No, no, because it's hard to it's hard to keep track of who's who's has a right to the throne and who has a right to claim it. Um, <laughs> because once once there is um, no rightful, quote unquote, male heir and when there is no um, or direct lineage of claim, then it's normally the strongest and or the biggest that that can claim the throne just like when um game of thrones started with robin baratheon taking over um Mm -hmm. so so you that was that was the quote-unquote ending of the targaryen dynasty you know um but but to have to to make the claims you have to have some showing of the lineage to the family tree and both of these fractions have a have a rightful claim both fractions have a rightful claim to the throne um i mean i know how it plays out but still i like this i like yeah. this build up and this tension that they're that they're presenting um between these two because you know it's going to be um hard fought um with um <laughs> with armies with schemes with Poison with knives and dragons. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> There's going to be dragons involved in this in this battle in these fights, and so yeah, just to see um, just to see these these fractions, this 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 um, few bo- bo- boiling up. Oh, this is going to be an exciting show. I can't. I'm hoping that this show at least has about four or five seasons in it. I'm hoping at least four or five. I mean, from what I've read, there easily could be about that much. 
I mean, just to, to showcase the war between these two different factions and all the other people who have to pick a side, like we saw near the end of the show, uh, where the uh, actually was it, it was the Baratheons at that point in time who picked the side at one. We were expecting them to go one way, but they went a completely opposite way. Yeah. Uh, all the intrigue that comes from that. I mean, this pure Game of Thrones, and I love it. Oh, this is but be, actually, so we, like we've been kind of talking around it. But uh, one of the major issues like introduced in this show is the idea of women being given the opportunity to lead in a male dominated society. Like, well, how do we feel about how the show has handled this? And it's like, is there anything else about this that we kind of wish they'd focus more on? Um, no, I, I, I think that this is a good depiction of the struggle that women have in trying to rule because the idea is that a woman's place is raising the children. But we see how even in the rearing of children, women still have a level of influence over the men who they are connected to, whether it be uh, a mother to a son or a wife to a husband or a uh, (laughs) mother-in-law. Like women still hold a lot of influence and power um in in this and and so i think that it is a it is a a good depiction of what the struggle not what struggle but how women are viewed in society as second class citizens when in actuality they wield more power than men that's that's the interesting thing is that women wield more power than men however it is men who who are the keepers of that power yeah, I'll say it that way. They're the men that are the keepers of their power. But but the the the, the way that, that women are depicted in how they are um shown in the leadership. You have a queen, you have several queens. It's always good. Listen, listen, if you play chess, you know that the queen is the most powerful piece on the board. And so you <laughs> have these women and I'm talking about princesses and queens that are, are fighting each other to exact their dominance in what they believe is right. And so you have um you have Allison Rhaenyra and uh Rhaenyra's aunt. I can't think of her name. Y'all forgive me, but that's her aunt. Um they all they're all fighting to see that either they're, they're fighting to see that their children are seated on the Iron Throne. And so so you are seeing <laughs> literally the the type of power and influence that women can have. Um, on a society that can change the trajectory of the um, the whole show. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so. Okay. Yeah. I think this show does a really good job of showing just how difficult it would have been, especially at that point in history. Like we even look around our own world history for women to take command of an entire nation. You will find very few societies have had a woman rule for a very long time. I mean, you, you could think of Queen Victoria, you can think of Queen Elizabeth II, but that's more of, yeah, they still married husbands, but at the end of the day, because they were not part of the royal family, part of the, uh, excuse me, at least that close, they were not, they were considered king, but the queen was considered above them as far as like the British royalty thing goes. But like uh, you may have, oh, what was her name? Uh, the queen of Hawaii, Lulu. Lucani or something like that uh, reigned for a couple of years, uh, was a very good ruler for a time until unfortunately the United States came in and sugar interest came in and we decided uh, what's yours is ours. And now we have Hawaii as the 50th state. So pros and cons. But speaking over time, like there are very few uh, women in history that have reigned for a very long time. It's always against the norm. It's typically it's going to be the man. Who reigns? I mean, even you look in uh, the Bible, there's very few uh, women that we see reign outside of their husbands, like except for I can think of what is the name? Athalia, Atalia, who is from the union between the house of uh, goodness gracious, Ahab and the house of the king of Judah and causes a lot of problems with idol worship there. So if you look in the Bible, there's not a lot of very positive female leader role models. But what this show does, outside of like you know, your Deborahs and stuff like that, but once again, she was a judge and not the leader of the entire nation. What I like is we get this conflict showing the moment, okay, 
everything we've ever done before this moment says this cannot happen. And yet the introduction is made and the people are forced to deal with it. And you see there's a lot of misogynistic content from like, hey, even if she becomes, you know, queen slash king, uh, we're not going to like care about that. We'll say to her face, yeah, we serve you. But they're mocking her behind her back. And even Allison, for a time, uses what she has around her to look like she and actually serve parts as a king when Viserys is getting older and he can't make all the decisions he used to make. We kind of get a uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. What was his wife's name? Oh, it's killing me. She was actually making decisions. Eleanor. Eleanor. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Actually making decisions sometimes for him because of him dealing with his polio. And a lot, you don't see that uh, taught a lot in American schools. No, but I like no. how this series shows all that. Yeah, yeah, you're seeing again how the women have influences that is not women have influences that's not being respected in society because they have the ability to make things work and go that that cannot that some men can't even do. Think about like where women can. Um, go into literally a meeting of men. A woman can go into a meeting with a whole bunch of men and nobody say anything. She could be mm-hmm. an assassin and kill them all. Nobody would say anything because <laughs> because <Yeah>. they <laughs> because men won't be even paying attention to the woman because they would treat her like she's a waitress or something that she's supposed to be here. Um, yes, but 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 yeah, it's this this show shows. I like I like how the the women in power are seen as women have in power, but it's sad that even in this show, like you pointed out, Christian, that the men still don't respect them. The women don't even respect them. Um, Cause Rhaenyra has to work on her aunt's approval to saying, Hey, support me in what my, my struggle for the, for the throne. And cause she was mad. Cause she got looked over. I mean, but mm-hmm. eventually she came around, which I'm glad. Eventually. Eventually. Um, but 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 I've I've talked to a lot of women um, pastors and they have they have the same type of issues now where they they serve in certain ministries and um, people don't respect them because they're a woman um, and mm-hmm. they they're like <laughs> and some some have told me it is it is this more so the women than it is the men that don't respect them uh, which is which is a shame because if you have a woman that's in position of power, I think you would think that you want to be supportive, but that's not the case. Um, take case in point where Hillary Clinton didn't even win the majority of white women's votes, um, which which is interesting because she's a white woman. She was anyway. I'm only really that long. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you were going. Yeah, yeah, but 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 the thing is, the the women have their position of power, and yet they're still not respected in their seat, um, because society deems them that they shouldn't be there in the first place. When they're more qual, they're they're as qualified as men, and sometimes more qualified. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to how this show continues to handle that at any time of strife, because even though Aegon has been made king on you know the green side of things it's really obvious who has the real power right now and it's not him it's his mother and you get to uh, Rhaenyra as well like she has that power now but a lot of it is riding on her uh, marriage or did they ever really get married I can't remember with Damon and all the like the ties that come from her father if her father had not said what he said had not made her by law queen no one would care what she had to say yeah so there's still a weird mix of relying on the old ways of doing things and like trying to make this new thing. So I'm very interested to see where things go. Like I know a, a lot of where things go, but I don't know everything. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you, but you still see where, and I hate to say it, women are still not going to be respected. It, it is eventually going to be a man who sits on the throne. It's, it's, eventually, that's yes. it's going to be. It, it just, that's the way it's going to be. That, that it was because of a woman that the throne was destroyed. I ain't trying to find it, but that's what happened. Yes, she, I mean it was because of her that the throne was destroyed. Um, several of them, um, but um, you, you're dealing with you're dealing with again just the perception and ideas of how women are treated, and um, again this show just 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 a depiction of how it is, how it was then, and how it is now. Even though this is a fictional world, it's still. The notion was women were supposed to be in the house raising babies, having babies, and all this other stuff. But even when um, 
Rhaenyra's mother was pregnant, she was trying to tell her this is this is where she fights. Like she fights the battle having babies. And yes. that that was oof, man, that was rough. That was rough. That that opening scene where they had to cut her open. Ugh. Oh man, that was and it was that all was, for nothing. That was uh, for nothing. For nothing. But I mean, I get it. That that what else are you supposed to do? The, the baby is breached. There's yeah. no way. There's no way that a woman can survive. The baby has to come out at some point. Um, yes. And and they had no other alternative but to do that. And that was that was really sad. That was that was crucial. That was crucial. That but that that changed the dynamics. And and that that's also where the grief and the and the love of a woman takes over the show really because because when his wife died everything else changed that's mm-hmm. that's literally what happened like after after when Varys's wife died i can't think of her name um and his and his son died that that's where everything changed and you yes. saw where uh Rhaenyra, um say the word to to elicit the dragon to spit the fire at the cars the cars um because her father couldn't do it he couldn't do it and it was it was at that moment that i think the rest of the um the rest of the uh oh gosh what is the king's council they knew that they knew he was no longer a strong king well he knew they knew he wasn't a strong king from the get-go but he they knew that he was weakened further in that state than ever before that's why otto sent his daughter to the king that same night like he knew mm-hmm. he knew she could she could she could she could then be in a position where he could influence her oh, uh, yes. to keep to keep to keep the king under control which he he was very successful in doing that you know um so yeah i, I don't know why i was going on that i, I just <laughs> well that's that. fine uh we've been talking about this for enough anyway so let's move on <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on to um, more of a downer bit. Like there was a this rather controversial scene where Larry Strong, who has a club foot, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, was seen pleasuring himself to Allison's feet. And I, we didn't see all of that on screen, thank God. But it seems to be it's heavily implied that he has a fetish for feet because of his own disability. Now, there besides the obvious disgust that we all had from watching that, and if you didn't, we need to talk. Uh, there were people in the disabled community who were in uproar because of them being depicted in this way, like saying that it made them all seem as if they all have this desire uh, to fetishize over a quote unquote perfect and better body. And like, what do we think about this response from that community and how can we like have a discussion around that? So, so I'm going to preface this statement by saying I am not disabled in any way. Um, but if you talk to my wife, she might tell you I might be slightly mentally disabled. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but no, um, in all seriousness, um, and I'm not trying to be funny, but but it's just a show, and 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 I understand how it's depicting an individual with a disability. Let's 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 establish it is a depiction of an individual with a disability. That's one individual. There was no uproar when uh, Tyrion Lannister was out there whoring around or doing all this other stuff, and 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 dwarfs and little people didn't didn't complain about that. So, and I'm pretty sure there probably were some folks who did complain, um, and they do complain. They do complain about how they are being fantasized about being short and elves and those type of things. So, it, I, I understand people's sentiments but it's just a show that that's it's just a show it's literally just a show and if you can't watch the show then don't watch the show but it's just a show and it's going to the show is going to offend some people it's going to make some people feel uneasy it's going to make some folks feel mad feel it's it is it is a it is a tv show if you don't like it don't watch it why why are you why are you making a noise about that just one thing when there's other things that are being depicted in shows and people are being exploited and taken advantage of where you're silent on those type of things? That's that's it's it's literally just a show. Just it it I I don't wanna be mean, I don't wanna sound harsh, but it's just a show. Stop your whining, stop your crying. It's literally just a show. It it it's just a show. 
it's, it's just a TV show. Like, it, I don't get it. I, I mean, I get it. I get how people may feel, how they're being depicted. Yes. But if you identify as that and you think that that, 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 that is a depiction of you, that ain't you. That's just a character who has a disability. That That's it. And he likes feet. Okay. My cat loves hugs. I don't like giving hugs all the time. But my cat does. It's okay. Get along. It's fine. It's it's just a show. Oh my gosh. I don't I don't understand the controversy cuz it's just a show. You just want to complain. I, and I I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe you caught me on the wrong day cuz I'm like this it's just a show. I have no love. It's just I'm sorry. It's just a show. It's just a show. <laughs> I understand where you're coming from completely. Like at the end of the day, I'm where you are, but to play devil's advocate for a moment, it's very rarely do you get disabled people depicted in a series, especially one as popular as this. So to have the one very notable character in that regard, do this and then have that on screen. I can see why people would be upset. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm with you hundred percent. It's just a show. There are things you could do better with your show there. Actually, one thing I remember, uh, I think it's in one of the the first book of uh, the Game of Thrones series, A Song of Ice and Fire. There is a scene, if I'm remembering correctly, where Tyrion does a flip. And from what I understand, uh, some little people talked to Martin and said, hey, like, that's not biologically as possible as you think it is. It's more difficult for us to do that. If I got any of that wrong, please correct us uh, anywhere on Facebook or our Discord or what have you. But I had to look that up a while back. But so, Martin, I'm pretty sure in newer editions, I think that got changed okay. to where it doesn't happen. Obviously, it didn't happen in the show right. with uh, Tyrion. So that's something that, hey, like, we're, this isn't possible. This isn't something we can do. Let's talk about that. And it got changed for the better, in my opinion. But I'm also with you, like, guys. This is not you on screen. I understand like wanting to have someone in that community represent you well, but I watch plenty of movies where bad white men do bad white things, you know, (laughs) and I don't, you know, I don't start burning down buildings. I don't go out to, you know, the Klan meeting. I don't go, like. I don't get upset about that because I know they're not real. And if someone actually legitimately thinks all people are like that who are white, uh, then let's have a talk. We need some therapy going on here because that's just okay. objectively not true. But like, I, I'll give you an example. I just watched a movie called Unseen the other day. Yeah. And every single white person in that movie was alt right MAGA all the way. Okay. And I laughed. I rolled my eyes at the ridiculousness of it all, and then I moved on with my life. I, I didn't go out on the internet and complain. It's okay. Like it, it's, if people exist, they are sinful and they're going to screw up. They're going to commit sins. It doesn't matter that they're white. It doesn't matter that they're black. It doesn't matter that they can't use their legs. They're still sinful human beings and sinful human beings are going to do what sinful human beings do. Yeah. It's, oh my gosh. If you're, if, if you are complaining about how you feel you're being depicted on screen, then turn the screen off. I, it, you don't have to. You don't have to complain on Twitter. You don't have to complain on Facebook. You don't have to complain and see the email. You don't have to write a letter to the editor. You can just turn the screen off. Now, yes, you can. You can make those complaints, but that's just you and your feelings. And if you got a couple of friends that agree with you, that's good. That's you and your friends, but the world does not revolve around you. <laughs> it doesn't. There's there's a lot of people in this world. This is over 8 billion people I think the last time um in this world. so so you ain't the only one that got a club foot or a a cliff palate or a cross eye or or I, I, you ain't the only one. It's, it ain't it ain't that serious. It ain't it ain't that serious. That's that's all I'm saying. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. It ain't that it ain't no, it's okay, people. It's okay. I think we just a little too sensitive. And Yes. That it doesn't I know your mama told you that the the world revolves around you and you think it does, but but 
that's just you and your mama, okay? This is you and your mama. That's what your mama told you. Um, but um, it's just a show. <laughs> it's just a show. <laughs> it's just a show. Like, people want to complain about the craziest stuff. Like, for real, that... <sighs> it's just a show. It's just a show. Like, if you, if you don't like it, just turn it off. That's it. That's that's how you get a show taken off the screen. You tell you tell people stop watching it. Guess what? And you'd be like, here, this is not good. And, and to get enough folks, they'll cancel it. They'll cancel it if people stop stop watching the show. But not this one though. No, this, yes. this is too good. No, so this is this just it's just a show. It's okay. It's okay. Y'all need a hug. I think people need <laughs> hugs. I don't think people hugged a lot growing up. I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. All right. So moving on from there. We're going to go. uh, So where do you think, you know, things go from here? I'm going to recuse myself from this question because I kind of know certain aspects of where I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I I just watched the show. I I didn't read the books. Um, So I'm thinking that there's going to be an epic battle between um, Aegon and Rhaenyra. Um, It's it's. I remember some of the tales from Game of Thrones, um, how they were fighting with those dragons. And, and this was, this is, this, I'm just expecting like literally an epic battle with dragons. Like I'm expecting special effects. I'm expecting like air, uh, air, air, aerodynamic dives and just like, I'm look, I'm thinking that this is going, this better be, off the chain because it's dragons and I want to see some dragon fights. I don't, but I don't know like what's the plot line, the storyline, any of that stuff. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just wanting to see some epic fights with some battles. I mean, dragons, dragons. Yes. So uh, I'm all for that. Cause eventually we're going to lose the dragons along the way because we are. they're not around in game of Thrones. Like how does that happen? Like, uh, do they get poisoned? Do they get killed by another dragon on screen? Is there a double kill at some point? Who knows? Like, let's see that. Let's keep going. I'm all ready for more of this. I can't, uh, are they shooting the second season right now, or are they already done? I can't remember. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It, it's it's coming fairly soon. Let's just put it that way. Because it's been, a, what, about a year since it yes, dropped? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Yeah, and the way things are going with production times, it's going to take that much longer to make shows, especially with a huge budget like this. So... That's where we're at. Keno, you know, do you have anything else you want to discuss before we head into the wrap up part? No, I have nothing. Um, but I will say this. Um, if you have not seen the show, watch the show. Um, it's good to watch watch the show. Um, this is this is a really good a lot of folks I heard or read, they didn't like it. Um, because really? yeah, I which I don't I don't understand because it's Game of Thrones. Like, if you like Game of Thrones, yes. you should like House of Dragons. Like, but some folks was like, it's just a, it seemed like a, it's a retelling of an old story. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> it, it really is. It is a <laughs> retelling of an old story. Like, yes, it's always going to be a power struggle for somebody who wants to take power of somebody else. And they're going to do whatever they can to get that power, to maintain that power, and to ensure that that, that power continues on with their own family. That is also in the Bible. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. So this is not a, this is not a, this is not a different thing. And I was like, I don't understand. But it just look at David's life. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, His you whole life. Some, yeah, you want to talk about subjective stuff? Yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, but but here's here's my thing. If you have not watched the show, go watch the show. If you watched it, watch it again. Um, because the new season is going to drop, and I'm excited about um these prequels, and I'm hoping that all the other prequels that that are in the works are released. I'm if they're in the works, I hope they're released. Because I like this lore. The the Game of Thrones um, world is a fascinating world. I like it. I like it. Oh, yes. So how would you rate and review this first season of House of the Dragon? Ten. Ten, Ten. okay. Ten. I, Very I, positive. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't... I mean, there's some, there's some things you need to work on, but... Um, no, it's ten because of the dragons. That's the... <laughs> <laughs> it's ten because of the dragons. But I'm just being real. It's, it's just ten because of the dragons. And that's that's what I'm excited about. That's I'm just hey, telling you now. 
It's a simple reason to love it. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect, Kino. Uh, I'll probably give it a nine five for right now. Uh, I have my own issues with the show as it's shown has been depicted so far that could easily go up as things go on from certain things that I know happen as uh, the story progresses. I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, I'm at a nine five right now. So, you know, as part of this HBO special we've been doing for the podcast, we've been asking like, how do you like prefer to binge your shows? Like what kind of food and drink do you use? Do you, what is your food or drink of choice when you watch shows like this? Oh yeah. So, so, so normally, um, I um I like to this type of show I'll do week to week. I'll do week to week. I like I like to come back and have something to look forward to. Um but this is what I will do though, in in preparation for the newer season, I'll binge the old ones to watch them over again. But um do I have a favorite drink or anything? Um no. No, I don't no, not not to watch these shows, no. No, I mean I just eat popcorn. That's that's it. I'll eat popcorn. All right. Yeah, I do watch pop eat popcorn, watch these shows. Yeah, I shared in another one. I've gotten worse over time, but I've become my father and then I can't watch <laughs> something way too long over a period of time like I used to be able to do. Like I could okay. just sit and just keep going. Now it's not as long, but I can, can I can still do it. I just get a little fidgety and I got to move and I got to do something else. <laughs> Once again, becoming Chip Ashley as time goes on. Yes, indeed. Uh, you look at pictures of us, we're the same person. Yes, he just has it. less hair. Ah, ah. <laughs> so, so at one point you will too. Just know that. He's going to come uh, back it's, around, it's on the way. <laughs> it's, it's dying as we speak. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, as far as food and drink is concerned, I'm more of a Pepsi guy. Uh, just have that around, like even eating sugary stuff. I know that kind of ruins the taste, but I'll just have some some candy or have some Oreos around just to like oh. something I can just grab or some Doritos and just put in my mouth. Don't think just consume and watch whatever I'm watching. Yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. you'd like to learn more about Pep Pepsi, by the way, you can join our Patreon. And listen to the Drinks with Teachers episode that we did on Pepsi. Yeah. So before we move to our proper wrapping up segment, there is one thing I would like to say. The episode that Kino and I did on Game of Thrones, The Religions, I said something so stupid that in the moment I, I wanted to smack me in the face. I okay. said something like uh, regarding Greek and Roman mythology. We have a lot of sources, but we only have a little sources or something like that in the same sentence, in the same breath. So this is my correction corner. Okay. For me, more than it is for all of you. So I apologize for wasting your time. It's like, Ooh. I think my intent was to say we have a lot now from our own sources based on the few sources we have in Greek and Roman mythology. Like we only have like Ovid and pieces of Homer. So I'm an idiot. That's who I am. God loves me anyway. <laughs> yes, he does. We're going to move on from that and my shame to guys thank you for listening to this episode i'm pretty sure this is the last episode we have for our hbo series if i'm remembering oh. the schedule collect correctly I so, so thank you for joining us on this adventure it's been a lot of fun talking about some really great shows and some really great times we've had watching them please if you get a moment just check out our discord or our facebook page or our youtube page i mentioned patreon earlier if you want to go in over there and help us keep the lights on help us get the opportunity to save up some money so we can go to conventions and see you all in person we'd love to be able to do that uh we have plenty of stuff there for you to listen to that we're not just taking your money away i swear as well you can go to our website at systematicecology.org. you can see all the hosts there everything we've done what kino and i have done what other uh, hosts have done and as well you can suggest future episode topics for us so if there's something we talked about you really want more of we can do that too so remember we are all a chosen people a geekdom of priests this was an Anazal Ministries podcast if you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network